enterprise funds. This is really what this whole uh, topic is about, is enterprise funds. Now, who are the customers of enterprise funds? Internal or external? Okay, what is your objective when you run an enterprise fund? No to cover your costs. All right, what? Why do governments run state lotteries through enterprise funds? Could you imagine if they ran it? Yes. Well, they run it because they want, see, I just told you revenues equal expense, right? But when you run a lottery, are revenues ever equal to expense? No, hopefully your revenues are what? Billions of dollars ahead of your expenses. They run it so that they can transfer those funds to the general fund. So when you review this, you'll find and you'll scratch your head and say, why would a state lottery be an enterprise fund? That's the reason why. They want to cover all their expenses and do what? Make some more to transfer it to the schools, to property tax relief, whatever it might be. Okay, so an example would be, for instance, state lotteries. Okay, now this is a very important slide. This is, tells you when GASB requires the use of an enterprise fund. When you must use it. A couple of conditions. If it meets any one of these conditions, you need to use enterprise fund. You can't run it through general fund. One, if it's financed with debt that's secured with revenues from that activity. What type of bonds they are they called? Revenue bonds. Revenue bonds are secured by revenues from the facility. Second, law or regulations require that the cost of the activity be recovered with revenue from the activity rather than taxes or other revenues. The law requires that you recover the cost from those who use it. And there's a third point which is not mentioned, which is if the pricing policy is such that it recovers the cost of operating that activity, you need to use it. These are three points are mentioned in the text. If any of these conditions are met, you must use an enterprise fund. No, any one of those. The third one is if the pricing policy is designed to recover the cost of providing that service. So if I ever asked you, okay, so you know where it says requires? Put the word mandates. So it's not just up to you whether you want to do it or not. It actually mandates it. Bless you. Okay, these are some of the types of enterprise funds. Water, sewer, gas, electric utilities. And you know the first two, these utilities are basically the prime examples of enterprise funds. Transportation systems, you see bridges, tolls, parking garages, golf, anything that's there. Liquor stores. Which state operates its own liquor stores? New Hampshire, that's what I remember driving up to Maine in the summer. New Hampshire has, what, what other states? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has the same thing? Okay. Utah, Utah too? Okay. But these are the, um, the what? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Okay. So everybody see the examples here. These are real commercial types of activities, right? 
where you have cost being incurred and revenue being received. Is it that, is it always the case that systems always recover the cost of providing service? I'll give you an example, New Jersey Transit. Does it really charge the true cost of operating the system to the, to the bus and the train rider? Why do you say that? No, it's, you're, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Because they get subsidies from, from the government. So it's not that you have to recover exactly 100%. If your intent is to recover as much as you can, there's a point above which you cannot charge. And New Jersey Transit, for instance, gets that. In fact, Rutgers receives money from the state. Several hundred million dollars, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I won't say anything. I work for Rutgers, so. But uh, the, uh, but that's you know those are examples of what you might find. Again, restricted assets. I spoke to you about what restricted assets are, and as I said, because of utilities, uh, most utilities are regulated. Do you know what that means? Regulated meaning that they are under the purview. For instance, in New Jersey, it's the Board of Public Utilities, not far from here, right near the train station, which regulates public service, electric and gas, the water utilities. Why do they d regulate them? Pricing. But why? Because they don't want them to, because they are monopolies, right? And they don't want them to go crazy in terms of charging customers unreasonable rates, right? So. Uh, in fact, I will tell you, I was before representing a utility, and when you appear before them, this is what they ask you. What does it cost to provide this service? So you say, you know, a dollar a unit. They say, all right, prove it to us that it's a dollar a unit. Once that proof is given, then they say, what's your rate of return? And there's a rate of return that's given to the customer, six, seven, eight percent. And your rate is fixed at a dollar seven or dollar eight. That's your rate. That's how the rate regulation works. But this part talks a little bit differently. What this talks about are customer deposits and others which the utility needs to segregate from the rest of its revenues. Okay. So basically on the balance sheet, all the cash you have received from customers shows up as restricted asset and you have to have a corresponding liability, right? So the other item shows up as restricted liabilities. So if you receive deposits of a million dollars from customers, what would you do? Debit cash and credit? Customer deposits. Do you see that? That's all it is. And that's what this is talking about. And here you see the example. Actually, this was the example we saw before. amount restricted for debt service and the amount of customer deposits, equally restricted assets. They cannot mingle this stuff with the rest of their stuff. Now, <clears throat> the next item, construction in progress. <clears throat> Read this. Interest is capitalized during construction of utility asset. Is that different from something which we just learned? It was capital projects fund. Did we ever capitalize? No. But for utilities, it's different. Interest is capitalized during construction. So if PSE and G is building a plant, any interest that's incurred is capitalized as part of the asset. during construction. <clears throat> now the next two slides, the allowance for fund used during construction, actually this slide, okay, this you can put in not an exam, if that makes 
because this is now we're getting into um, regulatory accounting principles, okay? And I don't think we need to go over that in this class, okay? So this slide, which talks about this uh, allowance, don't be concerned about that. You know what this is, basically, if you're curious, is when the utility uses its own funds, there's an imputed rate of return on those funds, and this deals with that. That if you use your own funds and you don't borrow, you're allowed to recover, capitalize the cost of your own funds, as if you borrowed them. That's what this means. And this is what I was speaking to you about, the customer deposits earlier. Uh, you know, th this might not seem too much now, but this is major, major stuff when you think about it. Because whenever utilities expand, they have to put new lines, water mains. And you always wonder, where do they get the money to do all that stuff? Guess from where? The ratepayers those who get billed. And for that reason, if any one of you ever ends up working for a utility, before you undertake a big project, you need to get permission to undertake that project. Public service electric and gas, if they decide to build a nuclear reactor, even if they had all the money in the world, they were, are not allowed to do that without doing what? Getting permission, I don't mean environmentally, to build that. Why? Because who's going to pay for that plant eventually? The customers, the rate payers. So if they spend a lot of money, that means what happens to the customer rates? They go up. So that's what this whole thing is, uh, you know, addresses. And I spoke to you about revenue bonds. Um, I want you to understand the definition of what revenue bonds mean. These are bonds issued by a utility or by an enterprise fund which are secured by its revenues. Now let me explain to you one other thing. Sometimes the enterprise fund is incapable of borrowing money because people it's got shaky credit. People are unwilling to lend to that utility. Now what do you do? So the general government comes in and issues its own bonds, which are called what? General obligation bonds. If they're issued by the government till fund, they're called what? Geo bonds. If they're issued by the enterprise funds, they're called what? Revenue bonds. Two different types of bonds, right? If the general obligation bonds are expected to be repaid by the utility. If general obligation bonds, which are issued by the government, are expected to be repaid by the utility, they, those bonds have to show up on the utility's balance sheet, even though they did not issue them. But they are expected to be repaid from what? The revenues of that facility. So let me ask you a question. If, as a utility, I went out and issued revenue bonds, do they show up on my balance sheet? Yes, because you're, they are revenue bonds, right? They always show up. I can't go out and borrow. I have my general government go out and borrow. What's the question you ask? Who's ultimately liable or who's going to be paying for that debt service? If it's a utility, then it shows up on the balance sheet of the utility, and the government discloses that in its footnotes. Okay. So please understand the difference between geo bonds and revenue bonds as they relate to utilities. So you were saying that um, the enterprise is responsible. Yes, if they are responsible, then you need to show them. We're nearly to the end of this. Um, 
as you can see, there are different types of enterprise funds. Now, one thing which I want you to uh, keep in mind is, remember I always tell you, anything that's taking place within the funds themselves, you don't count it. So if there's any in the government-wide statements, if anything is happening between special revenue fund and general fund, in the government-wide statement, has no effect. Because it's all occurring what? Within the governmental funds. If there is any activity that occurs between governmental funds and proprietary funds, you have to show that activity. Because it's interfund, not intrafund. It's what? Interfund. So for instance, a town has a water utility and the general fund goes out and buys water for the city hall from that utility. It spends $10,000 a year on that. Don't eliminate the transaction between the utility and the general fund. Two different types of fund. Utility has revenue of 10000 and general fund has expenditure of 10000 Don't eliminate interfund activity when it's between proprietary funds and governmental funds. Because it won't be right. If you eliminate that, you change the whole picture of the enterprise fund <coughs> itself. You don't show the expense and you don't, you know, they would have had to buy that water from someplace anyway, right? So, by the way, the account that it shows up is called internal balances. You'll see that mentioned in the book. Internal balance shows the transactions that occur between enterprise funds and governmental funds. Yeah. Enterprise and government, you don't show, right? No, no. Enterprise fund is within proprietary funds. So it's intrafund, not intrafund. You don't want to show intra, which is within the governmental or within the enterprise funds themselves. Here you're showing it between enterprise and governmental. So you always show that because it's two different funds, governmental and proprietary. This one you can skip, RAP, Regulatory Accounting Principle. Okay. This is what I was telling you about. You know, it's an interesting area, but, um, and right here in New Jersey, Public Service Electric and Gas, if you're an accountant there, and you come in and say, who do I follow, GASB or FASB? They say, forget about GASB and forget about FASB. You're going to be following regulatory accounting principles. You say, where do they come from? They come from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and this other body. Why do they do that? They are uniform principles for all utilities around the country. You are required to, in fact, the balance sheet and the income statement has to be prepared exactly the way they want it. No change. You have to show things exactly as they should be. So uh, that's what this whole concept behind uh, regulatory accounting principles is. <coughs> 